now we're going to do some more, uh, we're going to use the same properties, but we're going to look at a more geometric approach. Um, so our next example, given sine theta is one third and cos theta is negative, find exact values of cosine and tangent. All right, so we've got some information of sine. I want to know about cosine and tangent. All right, so sine, we see right away sine is positive and cosine is negative. So what quadrant does that put us in immediately? Sine positive, y positive, cosine x is negative. So we're in the upper half, so we're either in one or two to make sure our y value is positive. Now I need my x value to be negative, so that puts us definitely in quadrant two. So we're in quadrant two, our y value is one third. So that's about one third right there. So the point on the unit circle in quadrant two with y, y value one third is gonna be right about here. Unfortunately, I don't really know what value theta has. However, this question is not asking for theta, it's asking well, what is cosine theta and tangent theta? So I don't know the x coordinate, but I do know the y coordinate is one third. So if we use a geometrical approach, uh, how do I figure out x? Well, let's draw our triangle out a little bit bigger. Here's our triangle, right angle there. Uh, this side on the unit circle is one, one third. How do I get the x? We're gonna go Pythagorean theorem. And one third square is one ninth. And well, one minus a ninth, we better work at ninths. So we got nine ninths minus one ninth is eight ninths. So x is plus or minus square root eight ninths. First of all, we have to decide positive or negative. Here's our x value right here. So you can see right here in quadrant two, we're gonna go negative. So because we're in quadrant two, our x value is less than zero, it's negative. So square root nine is pretty easy to write. That's just three. What about eight? Eight is two cubed, two times two times two. So square root eight is uh, eight to the one half power, two, cubed to the half, you multiply powers here. We don't really need to get this involved. Um, I just want to write it as two, square root two. So you can basically bring out that two squared, so I write it as two square root two. So there is our x value. Remember, we're on the unit circle. I wrote theta where I normally would write the radius. So our radius is one, our theta, I'll label theta right up there. All right, so we got our x value it is negative two square root two over something, three. All right, we're ready to answer um, we got our x and y coordinates. We can answer what is cosine and what is tangent. So cos theta is x, which is negative two square root two over three. And tangent theta y over x, which is one third over, we gotta be careful, we're about to have a multi-story fraction. So we're gonna multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. So it's negative three over two square root two. The threes are gonna cancel, you gotta be careful. They will cancel out, but we still have a negative. So it's 
negative one over two square root two. And this is our tangent of theta. And there's our cosine right there. All right, so we did this in a pretty much purely geometric way using, I did use a Pythagorean theorem. We use Pythagorean theorem right here to set this guy up. Uh, you can solve this using basically just uh, the algebraic uh, Pythagorean identity instead of using any geometry. So on the next problem, what I will do is use, uh, instead of using a geometry, making a triangle, and then figuring out, and, oh geez, make a triangle, and then figure out how the sides are related and you're generally going to have a unit, uh, a unit circle, so your hypotenuse is going to be one. Generally, not always, but most of these problems, it'll be like that. All right, so that is first example. A second example, and I'm going to solve the second one in an algebraic way. I recommend that you practice doing them both ways. Using geometry will be a little bit more generally useful, uh, but you should be able to do these either way. Um, if you're better at algebra, that's great. You can do that more often, but you want to be able to solve them either way. Uh, sometimes one way may not work out for you and you might need to switch the other way. All right, so this next one, given tan theta is one half, And sine theta less than zero. Find sine and cosine. All right, so this is a good problem to show you a big mistake a lot of students make. So I'm going to write down something correct. So one thing we know is that tangent is sine over cosine, no problem. And tangent is one half. So here is a incorrect conclusion to draw. Well, if one half is sine over cosine, well, it looks like sine is one and cos is two. Well, there's one thing that's obviously wrong about this. What is the biggest value you could ever get out of a cosine function? is one. So I'm definitely not going to be able to get two out of there. Uh, so this is not, uh, this is a very incorrect conclusion to draw. So let's keep going. We already started this way. Let's keep going. I'm going to cross multiply. Fractions generally are not very fun, at least for me. So I'm going to write cos theta you sign the how did I get there, I multiply by two times cos theta. I don't really like fractions because they're denominators, so I'll just get rid of denominators. So that'll get rid of both of our denominators. So what this tells us this is a little bit more informative. If you knew the value for sine, if I double that, I get cosine. It is true over here, if sine is one, cosine would then be two. Uh, we know cosine can't be two, so sine is definitely not gonna be one. So we gotta figure out one of these two, and then we'll be able to get the other one. So let's go ahead and see how in the world we can do that. Okay, so how can I relate uh, sine and cosine together? So I know sine squared plus cos squared equals one. That's one way to do it. The other way we can do it, I see a tangent, so I know tangent tangent theta, tangent squared theta plus one equals secant squared theta. So let's go ahead and use the second one because I can see already, well, I'm just gonna drop one half in where I see tangent. So we got one half, this is, we gotta square that, plus one equals Secant squared, one half squared is one fourth plus one, which is four fourths. 
equals secant theta. I'm going to use better exponential notation. So it's 5 fourths equals secant theta squared. Now we're going to square root both sides. So we got square root 5 over square root 4 equals the other problem we have to worry about. I don't know if it's positive or negative because we just went from secant squared, which if secant is negative, squaring would make it positive. So whenever you square root a squared term, you're going to get plus minus. Uh, we got square root 5 over square root 4 is 2. We do have to decide plus or minus. Uh, secant is 1 over cos theta. I still haven't made my decision plus or minus. So let's figure out. We got to decide what quadrant are we in? So quadrant of theta. So tangent positive right here. That puts us right away. Tangent's positive in one and three. Sine negative, that only happens in three and four. So that definitely puts us in quadrant three. So what happens in, in three? Everybody's negative. So cosine is negative and sine is negative. So this cosine right here, I'm gonna have to go with negative. Now we didn't solve for cosine yet. I'm going to take the reciprocal of both sides now. So flip both sides over. So cos theta is negative two over square root five. So this is our cosine value. <coughs> and somewhere around here, if you knew cosine, we're gonna use this guy now. So we're gonna use that property. I know cosine right now, negative two over square root five equals two sine theta, divide both sides by two or multiply by one half, get that two out of there. Sine theta is negative two over square root five times a half. So the two and a half are gonna cancel out. There's a sine theta value. So you will notice if you multiply sine by two, you get cosine. However, that does not mean that sine is one and cosine is two. So you gotta be careful and resist this uh, common mistake up there. So that'll tell you how cosine and sine are related. It won't tell you uh, what they are unless you know what one of them is. It'll tell you the other one. And that is the end of 10.3. So 10.4, we're gonna get into some much more serious algebra and we will do that uh, in the next lecture.